Real quick, I just wanted to let you guys know that I've made a gaming channel where I upload stuff mostly about Pokemon. The shiny ones, that is. If that sounds interesting to you, please check out my gaming channel, Shiny Tunatic. It would be an honor. Okay, okay, now let's finally talk about the Hoot Shack. I'm an expert on this subject! Let's begin! It, Today, as of the day of this video getting published, it has been exactly one year since the finale of my favorite show, The Owl House, has aired. And if you know anything about me, well, this channel is kinda obsessed when it comes to animation anniversaries. But not only that, this video also serves as the one year celebration of me uploading on YouTube consistently. So, yay me, I guess. <laughs> the Owl House was sort of the kickoff for my channel. And in order to mark this very special occasion, I decided to talk about my favorite little details that I noticed during the finale. Watching and Dreaming is a very special episode, and I finally had the guts to rewatch it as well as write down my thoughts. Let's begin. What happened? I just love the colors and patterns of the magic liquid. The Titan design is seriously so awesome. Like the little hoodie in the eye socket. Pretty cool if you ask me. The mascara is on fleek. Not gonna lie, Loki, the Emperor Bellow strip looks really good on Luz. I'm a big fan, personally. String Bean, it's you! You sweet little power noodle, I'm so happy to see you! This is all you're doing. You helped Bellos meet the Collector. Your actions led to this. You've been the real villain this whole time! Genuine goosebumps. Holy heck. This whole confrontation is just so well done. Luz is coming face to face with all the guilt and doubt she has been dealing with for the past couple of months. Like, look at the expressions all her friends have here. Not even a reflection in any of their eyes. That's how you know the fun and games are over. We never see them actually acting like this when talking to Luz, which makes this dream sequence even more unsettling. Something clearly isn't right, but right at this moment, the viewer is just as lost as Luz is. Because we don't know what happened, either. How much time has passed since all the inhabitants of the Boiling Isles have been petrified? Was Luz keeping the truth from everyone enough for them to turn on her? Obviously, her friends would never in a million years really act this way. But it just goes to show how guilty Luz feels over everything that happened. And maybe, just maybe, this was enough to cause the Boiling Isles to get the bad ending, so to speak. Same goes for Ida's nightmare. Look how sad she looks after her family captures her and tells her that she indeed is a monster. Mm. I do love myself a good, the hero must overcome their inner demons in order to succeed angst scene. This is really hard to watch. Oh my gosh, this is quite the large amount of blood for a Disney TV show. Is this allowed? What the fuck? Is that allowed? Speaking of angst, let's see how King is doing. A room full of corpses of your own species, and you're the only one left? Yeah, checks out. He's also not doing so great. Special delivery! Pain! <laughs> and then I lost him, helping you. But you still get to have your own palisman? Why, Luz? Why do you get to have it all? I love Zeno's voice performance here. My boy is hurting! I said... I challenge you to a witch's battle! Boop. Boop. You look like Amity. You feel like Amity. But you're not Amity. So cute. The ear boop. You gotta be kidding me. She really does love her girlfriend with all of her heart. I challenge you to a witch's duel. Not witch's battle. And the Amity I know would never misquote the good witch Azura. And once again, the power of neurodiversity saves the day. Man, I just love these nerds. What's the first thing you do when you wake up from a bad dream? You turn on the light. Also, not only is it incredibly cool that the answer to escaping these nightmares is light, aka lose herself, but also Titan magic. And as you know, 
This is only the beginning of the symbolism surrounding Luce's magic in this episode, but more on that later. For now, let us continue. Family hug! <sighs> there they are, our favorite iPad kid. This expression vote. This scene is just everything. Albert and String be meeting for the first time? I know it's short, but this is more than I could ever have wanted. Thank you. And the spiders are awesome. Yeah. You tell him, girl. I know I can't play it because of copyright, but I do really love the music in this montage scene. I have an affinity for abandoned or lost places as well as urban exploration. And with Bellos throne room looking more eerie than ever, I really can't complain. Love what you did to the place. The beating heart too. Really makes this house a home. And also reminds me of the inside of the Statue of Happiness from GTA 4. Poor Rain. You tried so hard, didn't you? <gasps> nice to see that Amity is finally able to draw a proper glyph. All this time practicing must have finally paid off. Speaking of lost places, look at what happened to the Owl House. It's just really sad to see a place that was so significant to the show, up to the point of being the literal name of the series, in shambles like this. Although I must say, these graffiti tags do crack me up. Okay, okay, but who in the name of Titan took these pictures? I also wanted to point out how the Collector really does sound like a real kid. Like, all the stuff they say is just so genuine to how a toddler or child would react. The crew did a great job when it came to the characterization of the Collector. Really well written dialogue too. That game looks fun! I wanna go there! A little kid with deadly, godlike powers who, as an immortal being, can't possibly comprehend the transience of mortal life? Sign me up! Did you know Lilith was her captain? Really? Now that's a spin-off I'd watch. I just need to make sure to clip that in order to reuse it in the future. Just a little thing I have noticed in this scene. Some of the outlines overlap in a weird way in this shot. That's it! Show is ruined! How could they put out something of this low quality? I am disgusted! I'm really glad you picked this place, Collector. Me too. Adventures in the Elements is one of my favorite season 1 episodes. Day 1 Lumity shippers know what I'm talking about. We were all over this episode back when it first premiered. But aside from that, I also really love how Luce made a connection with the Elements on the Boiling Isles when learning the Ice Glyph. Also, I do love myself a good snow episode. This episode is also where this gif comes from. I use it in many of my videos. I just think it's neat. <laughs> it's Tiny Nose! Okay, this Belos Kaiju transformation is terrifying. Like, think of it. Imagine if your own city would suddenly become part of a giant ass monster. And all of this coral like stuff would start spreading everywhere. I would definitely want a reduction in rent after an incident like that. I have always loved the diseased look of Belos. How, over time, his outside begins to match his inside. And how he has problems containing this literal corruption and decay. Like, it's literally leaking out. Not to mention the whole body horror aspect. Belos is such a monster, he doesn't even have a human body anymore. He has become something unknown. Dangerous unexplainable. If he were still just some British guy, yes, he would still be threatening, but at least you would know how to fight a man. This thing? A whole different level. And the mixture of Wendigo, slime, skeleton, as well as decaying mushroom creature carries these themes across perfectly. I just really freaking love how unsettling this thing is. I get it now. You just need kindness and forgiveness, huh? Steven Universe would be proud of you, Collector. 
Solving every problem with talking it out and then hugging afterwards. Yay! Friendship! We're controlling it with the power of friendship! And the moon. Probably the moon. Oh no, not this scene! Ah! Before the finale aired, us fans were very scared that one or more of our beloved main characters would not make it out of the final episode alive. But killing off the protagonist? Bold move, Dana. Bold move. I guess it's kind of similar to how the finale of the Alhas' sisters show Amphibia played out. Anne also died and came back after being resurrected by a godlike entity. By the way, I love these coincidental similarities between these two shows. Especially the storytelling part and the structure of both shows. Amphibia's first half of the first season starts by Anne being transported back to Earth together with her frog family. Shenanigans ensue. Similarly, the first episode of The Owl House's first season also has our main characters returning back to the human realm together with her friends. That makes two reverse isekai arcs that show these otherworldly characters adjusting to life on our Earth. And these are probably my favorite batch of episodes from both shows. Well done. I know this is really sad and all, and trust me, this scene always breaks my heart. But look at how pretty it is too! The colors, the composition, the animation, the emotions... This is art! The collector holding onto the last remaining orb of light is just... Mwah. Once again, the symbolism. I'm not fucking dead. She fucking dead. So pretty! I would hang this up on my wall if the context behind the scene wasn't that messed up. Whoever had the idea to implement fungi imagery in order to portray Bellow's kaiju form taking over the environment really was cooking. Or I guess boiling because of the uh, boiling aisles, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this? Bruh, she knows. I just love this shot, man. Oh, I know what I should have said. I should thank them. Me when the clock is switched to daylight savings time again. It's King's dad! We finally get to meet them! And let me just say, I love the design. A scruffy but still around fun guy with baggy comfy clothes, he literally is just a dad. I love it. And that drip! My guy is just completely decked out in the best Owl House merch available. Words cannot describe how much the fandom yearns for those pants. The Titan could have chosen any form and they settled for the best one. But this one is really cool too. Close second. <laughs> I know Luz just went through hell and all, but I do really love how her messy hair looks in this shot. I think King said it best once. I am both king and queen, best of both things. <laughs> they really brought back one of my favorite quotes ever from the show. Oh my gosh. Does that make us as bad as Bellows? Bellows says he's trying to save humanity and we're saying we want to save our families. So isn't that the same thing? Don't, don't these feelings come from the same place? This is a really interesting point the show brings up about mortality and who gets to choose what's right or wrong. I must say, I do adore how maturely and nuanced the Owl House handles difficult topics. Like, there isn't this one easy answer to a lot of questions in real life as well. But you can make the best of it and learn from the experience. Such as, for example, how Ida learned to accept the Owl Beast as a part of her, because it will never just go away. Similarly, Bellus did many horrible things and hurt a lot of people. All in the name of saving mankind. Now, Luz still feels a lot of guilt over her involvement in all of this. And she thinks by unknowingly helping the bad guy to achieve his goals, she's just as terrible as he is. Luckily, we got Titan Dad over here snapping her out of it and spitting some hard facts. He just straight up tells her how it really is. Bellos is a bad guy and he needs to be stopped. Yay! Luz finally believes in herself! Let's go! What a great conclusion to her arc. 
that that's not all the payoff we get. Titan lose rocks. This is just the character powered up form ever. And looking at the concept art for Titan Loose and getting a glimpse behind the design process as well, I must say I'm really happy with the end result. They went with both, maintaining the witch elements while fusing them with Titan elements as well. These two concepts complement each other just so perfectly. We stan. <sighs> What's wrong with my magic? Can't you tell? You're exhausted. You all are. None of you have gotten rest in days. Camilla is really spitting the facts here. Everyone has done everything in order to save their home. Up to a point where they don't even notice just how exhausted they really are. None of them is willing to step down until it's all over. And Camilla reassuring everyone is just so sweet. These kids haven't seen their parents in months. Or heck, they don't even know if they are safe at all. But Lou's mom reassures everybody and tells them exactly what they need to hear in that moment. This does mean a lot. I don't want anyone else to go away! I don't want anyone else to go missing! I'm sorry for everything! <laughs> what is this stuff? Poor child. The Collector now knows just how precious a life really is. But at what cost? Huh? It can't be! Hell yeah, what a payoff! Ah, goosebumps. I love how she got elements from the whole Owl family in her design. The Fang for Ida, and obviously, the Titan elements representing King. This Owl House theme rearrangement playing in the background? Ah, epic! Love the fighting choreography in this scene. We all love when something important happens in a show like this, and the animation goes all smooth. But I also do like how the Owl family works together in order to defeat Bellows. Poetic. This is my Roman Empire. <laughs> yes! Oh, what I would have given in order to see Amity's reaction to Titan Loose. Whew. Almost passed out. Oh no, Gus Palace Man! By the way, did you know that this little guy's name was Emmeline Bailey Marcostomo? Because I certainly didn't until I started making this video. Now that's quite the mouthful. Again, wallpaper worthy. Uh, just to let you guys know, I actually did put this as my desktop wallpaper at work. <laughs> Come on, Ida. You know where magic comes from. From the heart! Another callback to one of my favorite jokes from season one. <laughs> This means so much to me. The double meaning, the fact that this actually does tie back to the show's lore, the acknowledgement three years after the episode that brought up this concept initially debuted. This show really does care about its fans. Come on, Ida. You know where magic comes from. She is so proud of her kid. Oh my gosh, not Rain whistling the tune of Ida's Requiem. My poor heart. It's okay, Rain. I gotcha. Like I said, I love when the animation goes all smooth and crap is about to get real. What a fight, man. The way Luz combines all the glyphs in so many cool ways is just insane to look at. Pure <sighs> eye candy. And it's not like this skill is coming from nowhere. She is trained to be this good from day one after first arriving on the Boiling Isles. Sure, the Titan does boost her powers, but this is still all her. Luce is just incredible. For I am the good witch Luce, child of the human realm, student of the demon realm, and warrior of peace! Notice how she does not refer to herself as Luzuro or anything anymore. She has succeeded in being the witch she always wanted to be. Luce is talking about herself in this scene, not Azura. She made it. She's proud of her heritage, human and demon realm. But she's also incredibly thankful to the family who helped her along the way. She couldn't have done it without them. So if you think about it, this is sort of like a metaphorical Genkitama moment. Now eat this, sucker! Hell yeah! 
Good Witch Azura reference to top it all off. Like I said before, neurodiversity once again saves the day. Yes, she is a powerful witch now, but Luz is still staying true to herself. I love that. The Collector finally gets accepted. What a sweet moment. Obviously, he still has a lot to learn, but he does have the best teachers for the job. Luz, I'm, f I'm free. Thank goodness you saved me from... from that horrible curse. Oh, just shut up, Philip. They're the same picture. Once again, Bello's true form comes through. The guy can't even hold it together when he is about to die. Good riddance. Bye bye, evil British man. <laughs> that was extremely satisfying. And scoop! Oh, your dad had a message for you. I loaf you? I loaf you. <laughs> Bread pun! <laughs> This is everything. Honestly, King's dad is such a cool guy. I have read online that Darius probably was devastated seeing Hunter like this. He would have had so many questions. But he knew that this was not what Hunter needed right now. Instead, he let him info dump about his special interests. And with that, finally gave him what he truly deserved. A family. A safe place where Hunter could be who he truly was. Somewhere to heal. New formula L'Oreal El Nate. Because I'm worth it. So cute! I wish gay people were real. Ida being nervous to finally meet Camila is just hilarious. Such a confident witch, but interacting with Luz's mom is where she panics. Real smooth owl lady. Now this is the reunion I have been waiting for. Eyelashes on fleek. He looks so magnificent. Hootie is my favorite romantic shoujo character, by far. Okay, I've decided to dedicate a whole separate video to the last 10 minutes of the show. Just because there's so much to talk about. So much stuff going on, so many little nods, easter eggs, and homages. And this is why I chose to ultimately cut this video into two parts. So please keep a lookout for that video. But I do still have some final thoughts to share. Although the Isle House was shortened by Disney, as we're all painfully aware of, I am still incredibly impressed by just how the people working on the show managed to tie so many things up in such a neat and satisfying way. Sure, some plot points felt short, or were only addressed in a blink and you'll miss it moment, but for the most part, I can say that I am very happy with the ending we have gotten for the Isle House. Up until now, I had only seen the final episode on the night of its premiere. If I don't acknowledge or think of this show ending, it never does, right? <laughs> but jokes aside, in my humble opinion, this finale is up there as one of the best endings to a cartoon that I have ever seen. So many callbacks to previous episodes, as well as the symbolism, especially surrounding Luz and her role in the show, all of these things accumulate into a very satisfying payoff, and I am so glad that the Owl House exists. Thank you for that. And also, please like and subscribe for more videos about being gay, doing witchcraft, as well as dressing up and traveling together. That's all for today. See you guys next time. Bye!